Alright guys, welcome back to the shed. There is the afternoon. Nice sunny afternoon on lockdown. Um been following the forums for Paint and Body on Facebook for the last sort of month. There seems to be a lot of discussion over um, using the correct hardeners, catalysts um, for your paint. A lot of guys on there have made comment that it's the paint police, you don't have to use the correct hardeners and they'll all work and MS is compatible with HS and ultra high solids is compatible to this that and the other. Um, I've always maintained that you should use the correct product, uh, the correct hardener for what you're using. Um, that way you've got complete confidence and peace of mind that when that job leaves the workshop, um, six months down the line, it's still going to look like the day that you put it out there. Um, so what I've done today, I've done a little bit of a, a control session with uh, controls of, of hardener. Um, so I've used um, the lacquer that I mainly use at the moment, which is the um, Leckler Maclefan. Uh, the Macrofan MC421. Um, I mainly use that with a medium fast hardener, the MH110. Um, always get good results. It's a good quality hardener, good quality clear. Um, so then what I've done, I've chosen um, three other ultra high solid um, hardeners by different manufacturers. Um, and just to emphasize, that there is a difference but it's it's not that you really know it if you were to just spray a car and put it out there in the short period of time that the vehicle stays with you on site it, it probably looks fine and there are no issues um, but normally a month or so down the line you will see differences in, in either gloss levels DOI um, all sorts of things you might have cracking you might have haziness in the paint it might be all sorts of things but you won't know it so you're you're going to say that this lacquer worked fine this hardener worked fine but like i say in the short amount of time that you have it on site you probably wouldn't know um one thing i've learned over the years um the puck the the, the over mix of lacquer that you leave in the bottom of your cup that's a really good indication of where you stand with what you're what you're using um, I've done, as I say, the first control one, um, my overmix, and, and with all of them, are still in the cup. Um, this puck that's left in this container is the correct hardener for the Lackler clear coat. Um, I don't know whether you can see it, I, I, I apologise for any filming and sunlight and whatever at the moment, but I hope you get the point. Um, the puck in this paint I don't know whether you can actually see in there. It's nice and hard. It still fits the cup, so it hasn't shrunk. There's no cracking in it. The colour itself, the clarity of the lacquer, is crystal clear. The white of the cup is still seen throughout the cup. It's, it's absolutely crystal clear. After that was painted, and they were all painted within an hour of each other, two days ago. Um, so on my um, sample panel, clear coat's been sprayed on there, just two coats as normal, both wet coats. The finish of the clear is hard. You could polish it, cut it back, repaint it if need be, it's hard. It's gone off, it's cured, to a degree, not, not fully cured, but it's cured. I can't push my nail in it, it's hard. So that's worked. The, the, I've masked the line off the top of the panel to show you the white background of the panel and how clear the clear coat is. It, it's the same. It, it, it hasn't tarnished the clear coat at all. So that is a good control for what I'm expecting out of the other colours or out of the other, the other um, hardeners. Second one I've done was using an octoral ultra high solid clear, uh, sorry, hardener in the Leckler Clear. So it's, they're all going to be wrong catalysts now for the clear. Um, as you can see, paint inside the cup, very yellow, some considerable cracks and more so considerable shrinkage 
that's shrunk about three millimeters now smaller than the actual cup so if I tip that out here we go that is the puck that's left in the thing this is still quite soft it's still quite soft it's quite jellified it's majorly cracked in lots of places so there's a lot of shrink issues going on there even though it's setting the paint off it's a lot of shrink back so how does that show us on our color patch this is the color that I chose to paint over so this has got the clear coat on this too has gone off I can't put my nail in the panel it's still quite hard it's okay but if you look at the border of this panel if I bring it closer if you look at the border of the color swatch right the way around the outside completely around it's shrunk it's shrunk by about two millimeters around the panel so if you'd have put that on a car and let it go out I would say two or three days down the road there'd have been some sort of shrink back that might have been around the edges of the wing that might have been around with the headlighters that might be around wherever but it does shrink so that to me is not a compatible hardener to put in that clear coat because it's because of what's happened I move on then to um, a Max Mayer high solid um, and once again these paints were all painted within an hour of each other on the day that I'd done them two days ago because I wanted to see how they all reacted along the timeline this one in the cup as you can see it's still liquid it's gone to jelly it's gone thicker but it hasn't actually gone off there's no puck there it's still liquid in the cup so if we now look at the template of our, our color check panel once again we've got a good result from clarity in clarity you can see where i've masked off the top part of the panel about an inch down the panel it hasn't affected the color of the clear coat at all it's still quite clear but the clear coat that's on the panel i can stick my nail into it i could actually pierce that surface and pull it back now here's a problem if that was on a car that hasn't shrunk back if it didn't need polishing if it was just painted no dust in it built the car back up and sent out all you'd know is that it's still a little bit soft but we don't know how that's going to cure we don't know in a week's time how is that going to work so for me that's a no-no you couldn't possibly leave a car outside a week or the additional cost of stoving that two or three times to try and get it to go hard the cost of that is far in excess of just buying the correct hardener so once again that's a no-no wouldn't do it so then we've now gone to um, a ultra high solid Max Mayer um, once again all painted at the same time if we look at the puck inside the cup it has gone solid it's not runny it's a little bit spongy the color is very very yellow it's really gone yellow so that's not good you have to leave that a bit longer to see if it actually cracks or, or distorts or whatever now this is the funny thing as well that ultra high solid Max Mayer is on this color chart now here ironically the paint is quite hard I'm not putting my nail in it but I can tell that it just feels supple it's not cured at all but once again unless you had that on a vehicle that you needed to color sand and buff you would not know that that actually hasn't cured out properly so if you had that one on a bumper or a wing or whatever you still wouldn't know that there was an issue with that clear coat for quite a time down the road i would almost say that these these last two because they're soft i would say by the time that they've cleared by the time as they've cured out i would say this would be a, an absolute certain for delamination I would almost guarantee that a jet wash or something would absolutely pull this lacquer off the paint so not not happy to use that 
so there we have it it's a quick test you can see with evidence um, it's a real gamble to use um, a catalyst from a different manufacturer which I never do anyway and even if it was the same manufacturer I think mixing um, HS with medium solids with ultra high solids whatever is just an absolute no-no from a chemistry point of view all these hardeners are benzoyl peroxides they're all peroxides uh, so technically your tube of hardener that you use for your body filler is a peroxide again that will actually set off your clear coat obviously that you stain the color so it's no good for actually painting um, but from a chemical point of view I've more or less sort of assumed that not all of the chemical process is in the catalyst I think that in the heart in the clears itself this part of the material built into the clear coat that reacts with the peroxide in the hardener so not always those chemicals have got a cross link so that they actually work correctly so I think that these just just working with this one with this Leclerc clear and the hardeners that I've got I've sort of proved that unless you use like with this one I'm, I'm using the MH110 unless you use the manufacturer's approved hardener you won't necessarily see what things are gone wrong until you're way down the line and by then you're into costly reworks so I think for the sake of buying when you, when you buy a hardener sorry when you buy a clear coat buy a clear coat kit if it comes with two and a half litres of hardener or whatever with the kit use it and stick to it you, you have to put this process in for primers and anything along the line of bodywork always use the correct activator for what you're painting if you get it wrong the consequences of, of paint stripping maybe even back to metal and starting again it, it's just simply not worth it plus your reputation reputation's just gone down the line because you absolutely made a mess of someone's car so for me all the products I buy here and I don't just stick to one brand yes I've got a Leclerc mixing scheme so most of my clear coats and primers and, and uh, even to the stoppers I buy Leclerc that way I have no argument if I've got an issue I've got one manufacturer's paints on the car warranty is no problem not that I ever ever have ever made a warranty claim about any paintwork I've ever done but if I'm using Standox I would use Standox from start to finish with all their products in the range um, if I'm using Glazerit exactly the same so it doesn't matter what I use I'm quite happy using cheap and cheerful paints as well like, like the cost effective the 0200 Max Mayer fantastic everyday um, clear coat I always use the, the 8000 the, the fast hardener I don't mind spending um, 50 pound on a kit as opposed to 250 pound on a kit it's got nothing to do with price it's all to do with quality it's all to do with this works and it works because of a reason so I'd just like to say that all the guys that are on sort of Facebook body channels and the ones on YouTube, if you really, really, really think that you can just get a clear coat activator and chuck it in the tin, I, I think you really need to think again. Um, right, I hope that's it. As I say, Thursday afternoon now, suns are shining, still on lockdown. Uh, I hope you find that a little bit interesting. Um, any questions? Just give me a message and I'll answer what I can. Hope that was fun. Cheers, guys. Ta-da.